Hi friends, so we were discussing about harmonic bass excitation and we were talking about how this system will respond when the bass is uh, moving or getting excited uh, like this. So if my bass is getting excited like this, then I assumed my response to taking this form. Then we calculated what will be this mag am magnitude of the amplitude and then we also calculated the phase also so if we go to uh, now these are the set of equations we discussed which will give me what will be the amplitude of my response so this is the magnitude of response where this is the magnitude of my excitation so don't ever forget to put this capital a that's why i thought i would give this uh a a different color because so that um, you will easily appreciate this so never ever forget this thing similarly we have found out an expression for the phase also as shown as here so as i keep telling you since in the case of a harmonic excitation time domain plots are not so informative or not so much informative so it is always advisable to go for frequency response plots for both these quantities or both these parameters which gives us a lot more information or intuition about the behavior of the problem let's start looking at the frequency response plot for the displacement or for the magnitude of the for or for the amplitude of the displacement now uh, one thing to note that we have dimensionalized or sorry non-dimensionalized the particular modulus of x of i omega term by dividing it with the a a was um if you if you would have forgot a is sorry wrong color so my a is the displacement or whatever were the it is the magnitude of my excitation it is the magnitude of my excitation so this is the amplitude with which our base is vibrating okay we have a system on top like this okay let's say this is my damper rough figure so that is that tells us the amplitude of excitation so now we are non-dimensionalized the parameter then this curve actually tells us how much the displacement gets magnified or reduced um, according to the forcing frequency so the x direction kind of captures the variation with respect to the forcing frequency now if you observe clearly here there are a few points to be noted uh, this point this point is defined as where omega by omega n is equal to root 2. If you observe this equations carefully, uh, what happens whenever whenever omega by omega n equal to root 2, let me show it to you. So the expression for modulus of x of i omega was 1 plus 2 zeta r whole square divided by 1 minus r square whole square plus 2 zeta r whole square. So if r equal to root 2 then what happens this term will be equal to 1 because if I put r equal to root 2 here this will give me 2. 1 minus 2 will be minus 1. If I take the square of it, then I will end up 1 itself. So, uh, these and these two will cancel each other. The denominator and the numerator will cancel each other. Then we will yield a value of 1 for modulus of x of i omega. That means, doesn't matter what is the amount of damping present in the system. Always, doesn't matter, um, always your magnification sorry that is something very important so um, we use i should have defined this up front this thing modulus of x of i omega divided by a is called as 
displacement transmissibility it is called displacement transmissibility so i think it is self explanatory the word itself explains what what we are, what does that mean so it tells us how much the by what amount the excitation magnitude sorry the by what amount the response magnitude gets excite uh, gets magnified or getting gets reduced with respect to or in relation to relative to your excitation magnitude so excitation magnitude is this one so relative to your excitation magnitude how much my response magnitude is getting magnified or reduced so that that con uh, this quantity will quantify that this displacement transmissibility quantity will quantify that so points to note here is that see whenever my omega by omega n is less than root 2 all the time doesn't matter what is the amount of damping present in the system i have a greater than one value for my displacement transmissibility that means my base excitation is getting magnified when i am going near to the system see if you have a very precise equipment then this is not the kind uh, regime where you want to operate you have to operate in this regime if you see here where the value of omega by omega n is greater than root 2 then your modulus of x of i omega or the your response magnitude is less compared to your excitation magnitude we need to operate all those system all those systems such as very precision equipments Mm, then your vehicle because as i'm traveling on the road i don't want to feel all the jerk and all those things i want to be comfortable so if you want to make your passenger feel all the comfort then you should design your system such that it will be functioning somewhere in this regime so that is one more thing next we will also talk about force transmissibility in the next video so i think you got what is the concept of displacement transmissibility and in which regime you want to operate your systems and one more thing you want to be very careful here is there is a see actually uh, in this regime as the damping increases as the damping increases it is is actually from our intuition we will say okay if the damping is more in the system then it is most likely that my displacement transmissibility may come down but in this the phenomena or the behavior of mechanical systems in this particular regime is slightly counterintuitive the higher the amount damp amount of damping present in your system then your displacement transmissibility is much higher in this regime only in the regime which is defined by those regions where your omega by omega n value is greater than root 2 Thanks a lot for watching. Now let's get started talking about force transmissibility. So force transmissibility is a quantity which tells us how much force is getting transferred to this object. So let this be our very precise measuring in instrument which is mounted on a platform. so if the platform is vibrating harmonically due to some random reason or some arbitrary reason then we want to figure out what is the force that my instrument is experiencing then we have to account for all those things and while i am designing so in that case if i want to compute what is the force acting on the system the best way to go up, do it is draw a free body diagram so once we draw the free body diagram then we'll get something like this so pretty simple the forces um acting on this system forces acting on in this system is the sum of these two things sum of the so if i call it force transmissibility then the transmitted force will be this is c into x dot minus y dot okay i'm just taking the magnitude so if you remember the governing equation of motion or the equation of motion for this object we wrote it like this m let's say i used 
Newton's principle x x in this direction x is pointing upwards then I wrote mx double dot is equal to minus k into x minus y plus minus c into x dot minus y dot make sense so if I use this equation for f tra force transmitted then it will be minus mx double dot so we assumed our x of t assuming a shape like this then we went ahead and computed this complex number x of i omega completely we computed the phase as well as phase angle of the complex number as well as the magnitude of the complex number then we, we were able to define the complex number completely if if you haven't uh, if you are a bit doubtful about the concepts in um, complex about complex numbers then i have a video it's an optional video so if you want to brush up your concepts about complex numbers you can i always urge you to go and watch this video and then come back so if i do this math here then it will be again x of t make sense now i need some more space here so let's let's move it here now force transmitted will be minus m omega square capital x of i omega e raised i omega t now let's say i want to compute the magnitude of my force transmitted then it will be m omega square mag modulus of or magnitude of x of i omega which will be m omega square capital a root of 1 plus 2 zeta r whole square i need again some more space so this will be root of 1 minus r square whole square plus 2 zeta r whole square make sense so this is the amount of force that will get transmitted to my object or my instrument whatever is sitting on top of my base now as engineers we like dimensionless numbers dimensionless quantities so how to convert this into a dimensionless number is simple so i'm doing this i'm taking this a towards this side then it will be in the denominator then i'm dividing both sides of the equation by k so now see what we are left with so we are left with sorry i uh we are left with omega square divided by omega n square why an omega n square coming here the reason is so simple because we are multiplying a k here so k by m will be omega n whole square that one then the usual terms 1 plus 2 zeta r whole square divided by root of 1 minus r square whole square plus 2 zeta r whole square so remember this is the force transmissibility not displacement transmissibility the only difference with respect to force trans with respect to displacement transmissibility is that here we have an extra term extra r square term in force transmissibility which was not there in displacement transmissibility now what is the physical intuition or how we can appreciate this dis um force transmissibility um physically okay so for that case let's think of two situations first situation where i'm drawing only my base excitation let's say my base is excite uh, excited like this like constant like and then let's say this amplitude is a now let's say my base is getting excited like this where again the amplitude is a but it is harmonically varying so it will be let's say it is sine a sine omega t so 
if we compare these two cases in this case the force experienced by the system will be this much k times the spring stiffness times the amplitude now if my excitation is varying harmonically then the x the force felt will, will be ftr this will be the transmitted force so this quantity tells us or quantifies the increase the increase in the transmitted force either it is a magnification or reduction i won't say it is incre um it is a it may be a magnification it may be a reduction in the transmitted force when my system is seeing a harmonic excitation like this so that is how we can appreciate force transmissibility physically thanks a lot for watching so keep um, keep these formulas with you because they will be very handy in the future